what I love about you, what you just said is that we're all going to face pain and discomfort regardless. Mm -hmm. The only choice we have is are you going to face pain and discomfort with the feeling of supporting yourself or are you going to face pain and discomfort with the feeling of condemning yourself, right? right. That's the only choice you have. We're all going to face it. We're all going to have to deal with stuff that we don't want to deal with. And the only choice we get to make is what attitude do I want to affect this from? What thoughts do I want to have as I go through this? And I think all of us would agree that we'd rather be going through with thoughts that say, you've got this, you can do this, we can get there, we'll figure yes. it out, we'll yes. find an answer, we'll make it through, rather than the voice in your head that's saying, oh, I don't think you should do this. No, this is not going to work. No, stop. No, you're terrible. Oh, this is the worst thing you could have, which is what we're all hearing. Right. Tell, let's talk about what are the key aspects? You talk about this so much in the book, and I do believe this is at the heart of the high five habit and also just the heart of what you're sharing in this book. What are the key principles of how someone deals with themselves when they love themselves, when they care for themselves? What are those key tenets, those, those key values that we can draw ourselves to and measure against and say, am I doing that for myself? Mm. Am, does that make sense? Like, yeah. Am, yeah. I, am I creating that for myself? Because I feel like we know, like we always say, and, and some of this is similar, but we always say, oh, if, if your child's, and you know, you have children going off to make friends at school, we always say, well, be kind, ask them, you know, you share advice, but we've never been told how to have a relationship with ourselves. What are the key principles to having a positive relationship with yourself? It's a fabulous question. So I think at the heart of it are two foundational habits that you need. And one you already mentioned, it's being kind to yourself. Mm. It's really that simple. And I know you know the study that they did in the UK where they looked at every possible behavior change that you could do in life. And whether it was changing in diet, meditation, exercise, relationship changes, all of it, the one change that has the biggest impact on fulfillment and happiness is being kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's the one change we practice the least because I don't think we know how. Yeah, I don't, how do, yeah, how do we be kind to ourselves? Well, number one, stop the beat down in the mirror. And despite the fact that it might feel weird or you're going to resist it or you got a lot of dust. Oh boy, we got to wipe it away. Ooh, it's more like mud. It's not like dust. <laughs> Jay has dust. The rest of us are caked with mud. Got to get some elbow grease in there. Uh, the high five habit every day is wiping that away. Okay, that's number one. I number two, when you catch yourself in the what if loop or the beat down, Use the five second rule, count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, interrupt it and start just interrupting it because you don't have to listen to it. You can't always control when it pops up, but you can start to create distance from it. Meditation obviously helps with that, but in terms of the hand to fist combat with your own brain, I prefer punch back, five, four, three, two, one, and then I literally go, I'm not thinking about that. Another strategy that you can use as you're doing the hand-to-hand -hand combat with your own brain is come up with like an avatar for this negative voice, okay? And make it really good. Like when our son was really profoundly struggling with anxiety, he's 16 now, he started to call that worry wart in his head that was beating him up, Oliver. And he looked like this big pimply bully of a kid that was out of the diary of the wimpy kid. And he would literally say when he was nine years old, Shut up, Oliver. Like, you're not invited to sleep. Like, he would literally talk to it. And it yeah. sounds like you're giving no. your kid multiple personalities. That's not actually what's happening. You're leveraging objectivity. So you separate yourself mm -hmm. from the voice that's talking to you. Yes. Um, another thing that you can do, I love this for worrying. Oh, this is a genius, to steal your word, uh, move. When you catch yourself doing the what ifs, because we know there's two forms of worrying, right? There's the type of worrying that just destroys you. That's destructive worrying where you just ruminate what if, what if, what if. Then there's the positive form of worrying, which is productive because it, it motivates you to change. When you get stuck in the what if, what if, what if, interrupt it with this, five, four, three, two, one, and then go, what if it all works out? What if this turns out to be one of the hardest things I do, but the best decision I've ever made? Mm -hmm. What if placing a bet on myself was the moment my life changed? What if it all works out? Mm. Because you can't argue with that. And yeah. it literally stops that sort of cycling because worrying is just a habit that you have. It's like a pathway that you've plowed in your mind. 
and it's a protection mechanism. Mm. You're actually not a procrastinator. You're not a worrier. You're just afraid. Yeah. And by staying in your mind, you think you're safe. And really what you're doing is you're holding yourself back from living the life that you're meant to live. I love that. That's such a great answer. So that's be kind oh, I've got to a yourself. Couple of, yeah, that and was then, be kind to yourself. Yes, and then yes. there's another one. And then, yeah. then the other ones. Yeah. Keep the little promises that you make to yourself. Mm. And there's two simple ways you can practice this that everybody's going to hate. When you set the alarm the night before, I don't believe in having the same wake up time every morning because I think if you have a normal life, things are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you were to have one simple habit, which is the night before you go to bed, think about when you need to wake up to truly support yourself mm -hmm. and then intentionally set your alarm. And if you want to get really intentional with the science here, make it like a random odd number. Don't make it six o'clock, make it 617 because there's a purpose behind that. And then when that alarm rings, don't think about it like an obligation. I want you to think about it like it's a promise that you're going to practice keeping. And this is where you can use the five second rule. You're just going to count backwards five, four, three, two, one to interrupt all of the desire in your mind and body to stay in bed or to hit the snooze button or to argue against what you need to do. And you're going to push through that resistance and take action. And by getting out of bed simply when you said you would, you are again, behavioral activation therapy. You're acting like mm. a person who keeps their promises. You can trust yourself.